7.30am on the morning of Thursday the 12th of April 2018, a friend offered to help me out by driving to East Halton, a journey of about 15 miles, to enable me to leave my purple camper van at the Black Bull car park and then drive me back to Grimsby to allow me to walk back to East Holton, being the first day of my 390 days walk around the coast path of England, Wales and Scotland. The previous week I had visited the Black Bull and made the arrangement with pub owner Steve to sleep in my van on his car park and that I would be happy to eat and drink in his pub. We arrived just before 8am and parked the van before my friend drove me back to Grimsby. On the way to the coastal path I passed the Grimsby Heritage Centre. In its heyday 30,000 people were employed in the industry. A third of the population of Grimsby and Cleethorpes lost their jobs almost overnight. Now Danish freezer trucks supply the still busy fish market. The docks are now used exclusively for German car imports and offshore wind farm companies. I have to admit, I have very little enthusiasm for Grimsby. In my opinion, this is in desperate need of regeneration. I have friends here, but not many. Since moving back to live here from Bulgaria in 2016, I have found it very hard to find like-minded people. The main problem to me is that it is so far away from anywhere out on a limb, miles from anywhere, a dead end, not much going on. It took me about an hour to reach the River Humber South Bank. The morning weather was reasonable, but heavy rain in the afternoon caught me out. My camera got wet and I lost most of my original footage. I have walked this path many times over recent months and so used some footage from previous walk to Immingham rather than have nothing to show at all. It was unfortunate that my first day got off to such a bad start. A path alongside sea defences is what you would expect to find in a very industrial area where over the past 50 years many multinational companies have been and gone. The Port of Immingham has enjoyed massive growth over recent years. Last year it handled 46 million tonnes of cargo. It supports over 10,000 jobs and contributes £700 million annually to the economy and is earmarked for further development in the post-Brexit era. Across the River Humber is the port of Hull, my hometown, where ferries offer a good service to Holland and Belgium. There is a huge BP oil terminal at the eastern outskirts of the city. My first day's walk had been a sad day a long day and a wet day, but I had recorded my first 14 miles. I reached East Holton and the Black Bull. It was a friendly pub with a busy bar and great food. Pub owner Steve gave me free accommodation, a cosy room with a bath and a comfortable bed. It was an early start to drive to the Humber Bridge to meet former neighbours Gary and Irene who will drive me back here to East Holton.
Right now, let, let me introduce you first yeah. of all to Gary, the driver. Yes. Good morning. And to Irene, <laughs> who sat in the back, who were our yeah. next door neighbours when we lived in Cambridge Road, and that's that's gone now. But they're very kindly come over today from Grimsby, picking me yeah. up here at the Humber Bridge and taking us back to East Holton, where I started this morning. Morning. Here we go. Thank you. Yeah, good luck to you, Jim. I hope it all goes well. Thank you very much. That you much. don't have any problems at all. And no, say no, you, you say it. Right, I've made it to East Holton Skitter, which is about two miles north of the Black Bull pub, that it, which I left about 40 minutes ago. And this is where the drain, and there's several of these, uh, joins the River Humber at the other side of the bridge. As you can see, I'm walking on grass now. I've put my boots on because yesterday I got absolutely soaked walking from Grimsby and uh, I just got caught out. I'd got waterproofs but the shower came so quick, the showers one after the other, very heavy showers, that by the time I got my waterproofs on I was completely soaked and that created a problem because nowhere to dry it and hanging wet clothes in a, inside a, a van in which you're sleeping causes an extra amount of condensation and uh, that's been playing havoc with the electrics especially on my laptop edit suite and uh, it seemed a little bit better this morning but it was very troublesome last night which is why I couldn't publish part one of the film so I'm going to take tomorrow off when I get to Hull and get the van on mains electricity get it completely charged up and then I'm going to buy a small electric fire so that I can just leave it on low while I'm not in the van and that should help This illustrates how much rain we had yesterday. Just look at this lot. Right, well it's a quarter to two now and we're just approaching New Holland. Now New Holland is immediately across the river from Hull. I can see exactly where I'm going in Hull from here. There used to be a ferry that used to run across the river here. There were three paddle steamers I remember as a child going on it very regularly when we used to go to Cleethorpes, funnily enough. So I'm going to find somewhere to stop in uh, New Holland and have a bite to eat and a cup of tea and just have a break. I'm feeling quite tired today. I think it's because I didn't get the kind of sleep that I really need for something like this. So um, we'll go and see if we can find something in New Holland. I've nearly reached Barton on Humber, which is the south side of the Humber Bridge. A few
feel a bit tired now to be honest. I went through a bit of a bad spell a couple of miles ago and had a couple of sit downs. I think it's because I didn't get much sleep and I got absolutely soaked yesterday and I feel a bit sore throat and stuff. Sniffing a lot. But I've done alright, I'll get there. And uh, it's ironic how I only did this walk about two months ago in the other direction. So uh, I, I'm not seeing anything new. I'm going to show you the Humber Bridge from here now. I've noticed the tide's coming in as well. And it's a long way from being high tide, but it comes in fairly rapidly. Jamie, look at that, that is absolutely bloody incredible. It's like the nicest lasagna I've ever tasted. Is it your own recipe? The following morning, I had a day off walking and arranged to meet my sister and brother at Hull Railway Station. This was the first time we had all got together since our father died in 2005. I think there was a slight nervousness in us all, but the meeting went very well after all these years. Princess Quay seemed a good place to start our stroll around the city centre. This shopping centre was built on stilts in the old Princess Dock in the early 90s. Hull enjoyed the title of City of Culture in 2017. £32 million was raised to stage the event and a 365 day programme of over 2,800 events, exhibitions, installations and cultural events was delivered across Hull and the East Riding of Yorkshire. It attracted 5.3 million people from far and wide and was declared as a great success. After a two hour stroll, we agreed to meet again at the next opportunity. It had been a good meeting. Barbara went home 
while Steve and I went to the KC Stadium after a couple of pints in a pub near the ground. So, where are we now, Lee? What's this? Windus Way. Windus Way. After Dean Windus. After yeah, Dean Windus. A legend. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, this is our queue then. I have been a Hull City supporter since I was 10. In recent seasons, Hull City have been up and down like the Assyrian Empire. Today, they lost 1-0 to Sheffield Wednesday, but I enjoyed the occasion. After the match, I drove direct east for seven and a half miles, heading for Paul, a small village on the banks of the River Humber, close to the BP oil refinery. Having enjoyed my day off, I was now looking forward to enjoying a night out with the locals at the Crown Public House where I had arranged to stay for the evening and tomorrow start my three-day walk heading across Hull to the Humber Bridge. The Crown landlady, Nikki, had given me permission to stay on the car park and even gave me mains electricity hookup, which, with my new fan heater, helped reduce the condensation in the van. You love my wife. Ah, oh, oh, my God. They do look a very happy couple, don't they? Uh, we are. This is your big chance. Yeah. Yeah. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Amazing. So, what do you think of this then? Well, the... this relationship is yeah. fine. I'm happy with it. I'm happy with it. I'm happy yeah, with it, yeah. Here on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. I'll pay me. you. Yeah. I'll get you a million hits. Come back. Sunday morning, and here I am walking back to the Humber Bridge. Might seem a bit strange, but it Logistically, this is much easier. I mean, these are my rules. As long as I do the walk between the two spots, it doesn't really matter which way around I do it. It all adds up the miles, and it's an honest account of that I've done the walk. My son Jamie offered me a lift back from the Humber Bridge to Paul, because being a Sunday, the bus service was infrequent. It's a five mile walk from here to the Hull city centre. Hedden Road is very quiet. On weekdays, it's very different. As the older docks were closed and filled in, new industries appeared on the same sites. In the 50s and 60s, Hull was the third largest port in the UK, behind London and Liverpool. I am now 71 years old, born in 1948, during the baby boom. At that time, Hull's population was 330,000. Today, it's around 285,000. With the new industries came new housing estates and a popular place to live on the banks of the River Humber.
ladies. The deep was opened in 2002. It is one of the most spectacular aquariums in the world and home to 5,000 animals, including magnificent sharks and rays. In its first year, it attracted 850,000 visitors. That's more than London Zoo. The River Hull is the big divide between East and West Hull. The West Bank is where it all started properly in 1299. This is the old town by the Humber. It was King Edward I who made it Kingston upon Hull. But people round here simply call it Hull. It is five miles from the River Hull to the Humber Bridge. The William Wright Dock is the only remaining working dock to the west of the city. Back in Victorian times, around 1850, the discovery of the Silver Pits fishing grounds about 80 miles off the Humber estuary brought prosperity to both Hull and Grimsby. St Andrew's Dock was opened in 1883 as the home of the Hull fishing fleet. All that remains today are the derelict buildings where thousands of people worked, both here and in the ancillary industries. The dock was closed in 1975. Thousands of people lost their jobs. All that's left are memories. Today, in its place, is yet another modern shopping centre. St Andrew's Quay. With just over a mile to go, I reached Hull's western boundary and into Hesel at the north end of the Humber Bridge. For me, it had been a long walk, but a very interesting day being back in my own backyard. Hesel Foreshore is a popular attraction. There is a beautiful country park here, perfect family walks. Many people walk the bridge from here. The Humber Bridge was opened in 1981 by the Queen. At the time, it was the longest suspension bridge in the world, at 5,200 feet long. Since then, a similar bridge built in Hong Kong was built just a few feet longer. At exactly two o'clock, the 13 and a half miles walk took seven hours. Being a Sunday with light traffic, it only took 30 minutes to reach Crown Inn at Paul. Day four started by watching the P&O ferry, the pride of Hull, arriving in the Humber after its overnight 12 hour crossing from Rotterdam. Today's walk is to Patrickton Haven, 12 miles to the east. My first task is taking the purple van to find a suitable place to park for an overnight stay. Then, finding my way back to Paul to start the walk. I am stepping into the unknown now and unfamiliar territory from here and the logistics could prove to be difficult. But I have a cunning plan.
Today has been my first experience of hitchhiking and only one vehicle stopped for me and that was the very first one and that was for, in the Nags Head uh, in Patrington Haven and this young lady who's a, a <laughs> lovely woman and, and I, I really thank you very much indeed for, for, for the lift, it was great and I wish you every success with your thank horse you riding. Much. Thank you and uh, I wish you all the success with your hitchhiking. Thank you very much, that's Super. very kind of you. It's Brian Kirk. All right, Brian. Well, I really appreciate this lift in your car, and we're, ne we're nearly to Paul actually. And it's it's funny that we both know, you know, Tim Beckett uh, from Hedden, and uh, he was a lovely guy. And his wife, she was a lovely woman. I can't remember her name now. No, well, but, I can't remember her name. Yeah, <laughs> but I mean, he had, he had that, and his mother used to be in the shop as well, didn't she? She did, yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, fancy that. And, uh, it's unbelievable, really. It is. Anyway, like if you're stopping here, that's absolutely well, perfect. I'm right. going a bit further. No, this will do me fine because I'm walking down the front. So oh, you're, the, the, you're going down the front. Yeah, yeah. I stayed, I stayed on the Crown Inn car yes. park last oh, night. Oh, that's good. Uh, they're very nice, and they even gave me electric, so I could, I could oh, work on the computers computer. and all the rest of it. Thank oh. you very much, bye. It's all right. You're welcome. Very nice to meet you. Thank yeah. you. It's been absolutely fabulous being here. Thank you very much indeed. My pleasure. And uh, you've been an absolutely wonderful host. And thanks for the electric hookup and <laughs> meeting all your friends. Yeah, it's good. It's um, been good. You've got a lovely pub here. How long have you been here? Uh, not long, not long. Uh, since uh, December 2017. Right, okay. So you're settling into it, you're liking yeah, it? Yeah, it's oh, good. That's good. Yeah. Well, thank you very thank much. You. It's been a, an absolute good pleasure. Good luck on your travels. Yeah, and keep in touch. You've got my card. Yes, I have. You know where I am? Yeah. Okay, I do. thank you very All much. Right, thank bye you. bye. It took me only two hours to do the 24 miles round trip to take the van to Patrickson Haven hitched two lifts and a short bus ride to get back to Paul. The Environment Agency were busy renewing sea defences and restoring the footpath. From this point I had no idea what to expect and how far this path would take me. The coastal path at this point was clearly defined and a comfortable walk, even facing into a strong easterly wind, but it proved difficult to get good video clips with a light handheld camera. But with patience and practice I knew my technique would improve. I found it noticeable that the coast path had no evidence of other walkers. Therefore, the path became rutted with long grass as I got further into the walk. After six miles, I reached Stone Creek. It's here that I met three bird watchers, all local men with a thorough knowledge of East Yorkshire, especially the banks of the River Humber. We chatted for a while and they offered me some sound advice. They told me to come off the coastal path and walk inland. The reason being that further on the path was heavily overgrown and unsafe all the way to Spurn Point. They advised me to start my walk at Easington about six miles away and walk along the North Sea beach heading south to Spurn Point it would be quicker and safer and I took their valued advice. They advised me of a good campsite at Easington with great facilities and mains hookup for my camper van. 